Since 4.0, every Blender update has improved the video sequencer. Since it's been getting so much attention from the developers, I want to test it for myself to see how it compares to Premiere Pro. I've been editing in Premiere Pro for five years now, mostly making YouTube videos, but some commercials and other content. It's great, but Premiere is expensive, and at times it can be unstable. So today we'll find out if Blender is a viable alternative to a professional video editor or if it's the garbage so many people seem to think it is. And if you want to learn more about cinematography in Blender, today's sponsor, CG Boost, just released a course called Master Cinematic Storytelling in Blender. Link in the description. I've never used the Blender video editor before, so what I'm going to do today is edit a full-length YouTube video inside of it with no experience. This will give an idea of the learning curve of the sequencer, what it has that Premiere doesn't, and what is lacking. But before I actually get to editing, I want to make a hypothesis. So a lot of people like to dog on the video sequencer, but I think it's falling prey to the larger Blender problem of discrimination. I made a video on this a while back, but basically a lot of people don't use Blender, not because it's bad, but because they're already comfortable with their own tools. They don't want to learn a new system and uproot their pipeline, which is understandable. I mean, if I weren't making this video, I would just be using Premiere. But I think that's led to a lot of false criticism. People seem to think you can't use it for professional level work, but I know that's not true. The Blender team uses it to edit all of their films. Jared Owen uses it in all of his content and Ryan King Art makes all of his videos with Blender and they're all making amazing content. So my ultimate hypothesis is that the Blender editor will work, but it won't have many quality of life features or effects that speed up your workflow. So I'll consider this a success if I can achieve the same or similar quality that I do in my normal videos and do it in a very similar amount of time. Obviously I'll be slowed down because I'll be learning a new tool, but I'll be taking that into account when tallying the final results. All right, so after editing the video, I got a feel for how the sequencer works, what its strengths and weaknesses are, and it's way better than I thought it would be, but it's not without its flaws. So let's dive in to the good, the bad, and the ugly. Most of the features inside of Blender are quite similar to Premiere or any other standard video editing package, which was a pleasant surprise for me. This meant that the transition from Premiere to Blender was pretty seamless, and because I have experience on the 3D side of Blender, the learning curve was almost non-existent. I was able to jump right in, cut up my video very easily, and Blender even has a feature where you can quickly close gaps between clips, which is a huge time saver. It's something that Premiere does too, but I really didn't think Blender would. This was the first sign that I may have underestimated Blender, and it continued with color grading. Premiere has the Lumetri color grading system, and I'm by no means a professional colorist, but I can do a lot with it. I didn't expect Blender to really have have any color grading features, maybe just exposure and saturation control, but it did. Now this isn't on par with Premiere, I wouldn't feel comfortable grading log footage or anything, but for the A roll of this video, it was awesome. It allowed me to do basic color correction in an intuitive way, and in the preview mode of Blender, I had access to all the scopes I typically like to use in Premiere, which allowed me to dial in my grade exactly how I wanted to inside of Blender. But while I was pleasantly surprised with the timeline and color grading features, there are a few areas that Blender well surpasses Premiere, which really surprised me. I mean, for most people, the Blender editor is kind of an afterthought, while Premiere is one of the very best. The first one of these areas is navigation in the timeline. It's super easy to move around because it makes use of the middle mouse button. You can scroll in and out and then use the middle mouse to move side to side. Alternatively, you can use these handles that allow you to navigate, but I love hotkeys. I don't think I used them the entire time I was editing. This was particularly apparent in one segment of the video where I had 43 different layers active but with the better navigation system inside of Blender, it made it a breeze to work with. Which brings us to the second area that Blender is better at, and that's handling heavy multi-layer segments. And I'm not talking about nine or 10 layers, I mean 40 plus. While the general performance inside of the Blender timeline wasn't amazing, we'll get back to that in a minute, it handled my 40 plus animation like it was nothing. I played it back just as smoothly as any other part of the video. In Premiere, I would have had to cache that segment to even be able to watch it. Typically segments like these are a huge, pain, but Blender handled it like a champ. Thirdly, Blender is very modular. If you've worked in it for any length of time, you know how easy it is to reassign and set up new hotkeys and shortcuts. I immediately changed the hotkey for split from K to D, so I wouldn't have to reach across the whole keyboard every time I needed to cut something. It's really easy to reassign any function to the easiest hotkey for you, so you can dial in and really get your perfect workflow together. The final thing Blender did better, and this is a big one, animation. Animating in Blender is 
so much easier than Premiere. The graph editor is more responsive, navigating the dope sheet is easier, and there are way more interpolation options. It's literally night and day. Blender is 100% better for animation. But when you think about why Blender is so good at animation in the editor, it makes sense. It's extremely good at 3D animation, one of the best programs, in my opinion, second only to Maya. So when you're able to use that same system, even if it's just animating backgrounds and color layers, it's going to be way better. If I could bring Blender's animation system into Premiere, I would do it in a heartbeat. The graph editor alone gives you more control. It's faster, easier to keyframe, allows you to work with individual channels instead of just position and scale, and it makes it easier to work in the preview because you can click G to grab, R to rotate, S to scale. But the one thing I really appreciate about the video sequencer is the ease of use. I've had about three and a half years experience in Blender and five in Premiere. And if you're going into it like I was, there's almost no learning curve. It's really easy to pick up. If you're new, I would go through Ryan King Art's tutorial in the editor. It's really well put together, but honestly, I was pleasantly surprised by how intuitive Blender's editor is, especially since the same can't be said for the 3D side of Blender. But sometimes it's not even the technical skill set that's to blame for bad renders, but rather a misunderstanding of what makes images pleasing. That's where today's sponsor, CG Boost, comes in. They've recently released a new course called Master Cinematic Storytelling in Blender. I've taken it myself and I'll say, I've been studying filmmaking theory for about five years at this point, and it condenses just about all the information I learned in all that time into simple, digestible lessons that you can complete in a week, which is absolutely crazy. You'll learn what it takes to make a cinematic image and master color theory, depth, composition, lighting, camera movement, and contrast. Time is a valuable resource. And if you try to learn all this stuff on your own, you're going to waste a lot of it and you're gonna miss things too. I genuinely feel like there wasn't a wasted second. You'll get 120 lessons totaling nine hours of content, file downloads for every project, and lots of well thought out exercises to reinforce what you're learning. The first 100 students to use my discount code CINEMA will get 20% off, which is an amazing deal. So make sure you check them out, link in the description. So after all of that, you may be really hyped, but Blender's video editor has some major failings as well. We're gonna start with the least noticeable and then go through till we get to the one that will be a deal breaker for a lot of people. A really minor one is the audio waveforms. They're great and they allow you to edit faster because you can see what's happening with your audio without having to listen to it. But unless your audio is really loud, you can't see them well. This is the first of many issues I had with editing audio inside of Blender. That'll be a recurrent theme throughout the rest of this video. Second, you don't have a media window inside of the editor. I mean, you can navigate to the folder where you're storing everything on your computer, but I personally like how Premiere has a media window with all the clips from your entire project in one place. Another minor thing is timeline speed. In Premiere, you can use the J, K, and L keys to reverse, pause, and speed up your timeline playback. This is great, especially when you're cutting up A-roll because you can watch your video back at two or even four times speed, but I couldn't find a way to do this in Blender. But those are just some small quality of life issues. Now let's get into the deal breakers. These are the things that really annoyed me and slowed me down. First of all, there's no nest function inside of Blender. Nesting clips allows you to join multiple layers together into one, which is very useful, first of all, just for performance, but secondarily, it makes it easier to animate because you don't have to animate on one layer, then copy it to the next. You just keyframe them all at the same time. Now, Blender does have the ability to connect clips. It was added in 4.3 and it's great, but it doesn't join them into one. And as far as I know, there's no way to do it in Blender. But if you know of a way, please let me know in the comments. That would be really helpful. Second, and this one's gonna be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Blender is slower. The timeline jitters more and the playback is more choppy. It'll stop for a split second almost every time there's a cut, which can make it difficult to preview what's going on. On the other hand, I had that one sequence with 43 layers and it handled it all like it had five layers. So maybe this is just something wrong with my settings. Even though I spent a ton of time optimizing Blender and learning all the features, it's certainly possible I missed something, but this was very annoying to me. This didn't necessarily slow me down, but the playback wasn't nearly as smooth as Premiere, which made it difficult to really preview animations and see if they looked right. Third, Blender is missing an effects panel. In Premiere, there is an extensive effects panel with thousands of options. I certainly don't use them all, but in my videos, I use these a lot. Blender does have a small effects menu. If you select a clip and hit Shift A, you'll see that, but it's very limited. It only has a few effects. Also, Blender doesn't have a way to mask inside of the editor. While you can create masks inside of Blender, you have to go into a different workspace. This is really not great when I'm working with hundreds of clips in a video, and I can't take the time to baby every single one. The same is true for the chroma key. Even though Blender 
Premiere has a keying setup that is more advanced than Premiere. It's difficult to access because it's in the compositor rather than in the editor. In Premiere, it's three clicks in a slider. If I'm just importing green screen footage that doesn't need a lot of cleanup, while with Blender, you have to take that footage into the compositor and then bring it into the editor. This isn't a big deal if you're working with one clip, but again, if you have 20, 30, or even 100 in your timeline, that takes forever. Finally, let's talk about audio. This is by far the biggest failing of the video sequencer, and it's going to be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Blender's audio tools are almost non-existent. This makes sense because to my knowledge, this is the only area inside of Blender where the audio is even used. Even though I personally don't use many audio effects, I found the tools very lacking. You can hear how bad and unprofessional the audio sounds in the final video, because outside of basic volume control, there's almost no way to manipulate it. There's only one modifier for the audio, which is added in Blender 4.0. It's called the sound equalizer, and it works okay in the timeline, but whenever I tried to export it, any clips that had this modifier attached to them dropped like every other frame, which made the audio completely unusable. Maybe there's a way to fix it, but I had to end up cutting it entirely. And even if I'd been able to keep it, it didn't make the audio sound really much better. This is the area I found to be most lacking in the video editor. But there is a way to get around it that we'll talk about at the end of the video. Okay, so that was my experience editing in Blender. Who is it actually for? Because even though it has its downsides, it has a lot going for it. Its animation and navigation are top notch. Plus 4.5 beta is dropping on June 4th. When it's fully released in July, it'll introduce a new caching system that should speed up the sequencer substantially. But even right now, I was very impressed with Blender's video editor. If it had more audio editing capabilities, I would honestly consider switching over from Premiere to Blender, but you can get around this by using a separate audio editing program. If you processed your audio in Audacity or DaVinci before bringing it into Blender, that would fix the issue. Whenever I see people talking about Blender's video sequencer, they always have a caveat. They talk about how limited it is, like it's some under-supported forgotten feature, but that couldn't be further from the truth. If you just need an editor for your renders and don't have to worry about audio, use Blender. Or if you have some experience in Blender, but haven't done much complex video editing, it's a great tool that's intuitive, powerful, and free. Because at least in my experience, it can do about 80% of what Premiere can. And most of the time, those extra features in Premiere, that extra 20%, they're pretty niche and you're not going to use them. Huge thanks to CG Boost for sponsoring this video. They're great. You should absolutely check them out. And thank you for watching.